Yeah, good day, Charlie ZL2 CDM. Just um, doing a little listen there on the 80 meter band here at uh, quarter past eight or half past eight in the morning, uh, New Zealand time. And uh, I'll just talk to um, talk to how we're going and sort of where we got to over the last couple of days. So I'm just uh, listening to one of the IQ channels going straight through the audio amplifier there. Okay, let me just turn that volume down there. Okay, so um, like I say, this is to provide an update on where we've got to over the last couple of days. Um, and I guess to, um, <clears throat> like I say, provide an update and then and, and essentially go from there. So what we have at the moment uh, is the the radio set up in, um, I won't say the, certainly not the final configuration, but a, an initial test configuration. On the left hand side here we have the RF amplifier and I'll just quickly touch on a sec how that was finished off in terms of that um, variable pot there. So we've got a bypass switch there, up is off and then down is actually in the circuit. It's now coming through to, as we described the other day, into the bandpass filter. At this stage the game I was going to play around with having uh, removable uh, plug-in filters um, as opposed to that um, that single variable capacitor feeding um, three filters all in parallel um, with the with the relay switching in and out. Um, that configuration must have actually worked quite well and was very similar in regards to the performance of the individual filters here. These here are the ones I've used before. They're um, out of the SSDRA, out of the annex in the back. Uh, that's now feeding into an RF splitter, which we'll look at in a sec, uh, into the two SBL1s. And then the switch arrangement here is purely for test. Uh, just looking at the either the I or the Q going directly through the audio amplifier um, or sending that uh, audio into the Tensi and then and then monitoring the output. Um, I've got a fault with the, the audio board um, which is preventing me from going forward but uh, we'll get to that in a sec. So just um, coming back to the RF amplifier um, here, uh, when we left last time um, I determined that the best voltage for the gate was between 0 and uh, 1.5 volts. Um, since then I've, I've now worked out what the, the value needs to be for the dropping resistor um, for using a, a 500 ohm pot. So the 500 ohm pot there is in series with a, uh, an unknown resistor and then the, the, uh, the wiper arm of the pot is then going from 0 up to a maximum of 1.5. So if we use the worst case scenario and we're now at the 1.5 point, then we have a full voltage divider. Um, so therefore we can then use a bit of algebra to work out what the value of X is, our unknown uh, value. So if we were to say then 1.5 volts equals 13.8 volts times our voltage divider, so the 500 ohms divided by 500 plus X, that's our initial starting expression. We can now multiply both sides by 500 plus X to eliminate it from here and bring it across the other side. So 1.5 brackets, 500 plus X equals 13.8 times, now just, we're just left with the 500. Multiply that out, gives us 1.5 X equals, oh sorry, gives us that expression there. We can then subtract 750 from both sides, in other words just move that to the other side as a minus. So 1.5 X equals 6900 minus 750. And then we can move or divide both sides by 1.5 to eliminate this side. In other words, bring it to the other side down the bottom. So these are just all the, the rules uh, for doing algebra nice and quickly. So this side comes down on a diagonal line down to the bottom, 1.5. So therefore our final value for x equals 6900 minus 750 divided by 1.5 comes out at 4100. I'm going to go for a slightly, a slightly smaller value. I'm going to go for the nearest one size down standard value of 3900. Um, and by doing so, that will guarantee then, if this is slightly smaller than needed, that I'll be just slightly above 1.5, uh, as opposed to, say, going out to 4.7 megs, and then I wouldn't be able to get up to 1.5 volts. So just doing a quick check here. So back into our initial expression. 13.8 volts times 500 divided by 500 plus our now assigned 3900 gives us 1.57. Uh, and actual tests uh, in circuit 
indeed gives us 1.57. The other good thing too, uh, worst case scenario if I was right up here and I was applying full uh, 1.5 volts to the um, to the uh, gate of the FET, uh, just making sure I don't exceed that current. We initially had a value of 2700, we're up to 3900, so that's good. So uh, we're certainly not going to um, uh, exceed that current limitation for the FET. Um, very simple uh, bypass, the bypass switch there. Um, nothing spectacular there at all, just a, a double pole, double throw switch uh, in one position, in the on position for, for New Zealand, that's down. Uh, that puts the amplifier in circuit, and then in the off position, it, there's just a straight bypass link. So the antenna then is just bypassed directly through to the bandpass filter. Um, as mentioned, the bandpass filters themselves are just straight out of SSDRA, so uh, nothing special there. I won't go into that. There's, um, I've got some other videos up which talk about what they are. I, I haven't totally um, excluded or done away with the, the variable one. Uh, it's just, at the moment, the performance was not too bad and I wanted to, to get more into developing this side, so for now I'm going to uh, work with these plug-in plug ones. I think it's a 20 meter one. Um, and then move forward. Okay, the RF splitter there, um, that was pretty straightforward, so um, that there is an FT37-43. Um, it looks like that in terms of a circuit. Uh, two bifiler windings, um, so that's 10 turns of uh, number 26 wire, as I've mentioned up there, bifiler wound, and sitting across the output is a 100 ohm resistor all the way across to help present to the two SBL1s 500 ohms, um, say again 50 ohms, um, input impedance for the RF port. The black wires there are providing the uh, the two um, BFO signals, not BFO sorry, the two local oscillator frequencies uh, signals, they're coming from the SI5351. Uh, at this stage of the game I've got that, oh gosh, excuse me, um, at this stage of the game I've got that sitting in a metal can. Uh, direct conversion receivers, all the wisdom seems to be um, really stressing the need for the local oscillator to be well shielded uh, because its signal is exactly the same frequency as the signal coming in. Uh, so to minimise any interference in that and birdies and, and the like, uh, it's, it's desirable to have that filtered out. Um, I must admit, I'm not really seeing any performance improvement at all with that. Um, and I might show that later on when I've taken the cover on and off. Um, I, I don't get any improvement at all. But here now there, I'll, I'll go run with the guidance for now. Okay, so, moving forward then. Um, the mixer, well not the mixer, sorry, the, the Tensi has been interesting. Um, I think I've had a, a problem with this from the get-go a hardware issue. What we've got, ordinarily, the two grey wires here are taking the RF, say again, taking the audio from the two SBL1s and the output port of those two SBL1s on the IF, which in this particular case because the DC receiver is audio, there's a, a 50 ohm resistor directly to earth and then I'm just taking the output across that. Um, I'm not using any coupling capacitors uh, external to the Tensi because the Tensi's got 2.2 microfarad capacitors uh, on the input so I'm just taking it directly from the top um, of that 50 ohm resistor. Anyway, so those two um, in-phase and quadrature audio signals are now going into the line in of the audio shield and at the moment I'm just running some software on the shield that uh, directly ports what's coming in on the line in directly to the headphone and taking it straight back out again to the audio amplifier. Um, I've left the defaults uh, as defaults in terms of the, the amplification of the line coming in. So you can, you can individually set or set together uh, some amplification for the line in of the audio shield. Like I say, I've just left it at default and I've left the output volume um, at a level that provides um, the same level of volume as the direct straight through, just for comparison's sake. Now I mentioned those switches before. Um, 
they're there for a, a reason. So if I was to now just go back to put that switch in that position there, you might be able to hear it in the background. Or tune off and you'll certainly hear it. That's now going through the Teensy. But you can hear in the background if I just tune off. In fact, I'll put the antenna into the... Um, I'll turn off the RF amplifier. You can just hear that, that squealing noise. Which is really interesting. Now, if I was to bypass the Teensy, in other words, take the output of the of the of the two or one of the uh, mixes straight to the audio amplifier, you'll hear the difference. Right. So that's now directly. That's now directly from the either one of these two. This this switch here switches between the outputs, the two outputs, just for a comparison, and that's going directly through to our audio amplifier. The noise is definitely coming from inside here because I can do things like now I go back to the Tensi. I can uh, switch off the input of the audio amplifier, and it's quiet as a mouse. It's certainly not there. Um, I can remove the total input. So I've now removed the input to the Teensy. So the Teensy is now, now arguably, um, I haven't terminated the input with any uh, impedance, but it's certainly coming from within the device, which is a bit of a pain. So just uh, go back to there. And the other thing too, which has just manifested itself um, this morning, I, I, th I think this board was on its way out, because as of this morning, if I now switch to the other channel, so that's the quadrature channel. So I've got the in-phase and quadrature. The, the quadrature channel through that audio amplifier is dead. Go back to the in-phase, here it is. Um, and I know it's dead because if I go back to our direct conversion, so that's now directly from the SBL through to the audio amplifier, I can now switch between the two SBL1s. Now the slight sound difference there will disappear when I remove that loading because I've got the, uh, the I had the TNC sitting in parallel, now if I switch backwards and forwards it's exactly the same. Which makes perfect sense, the only difference between the two circuits is the um, local oscillator is 90 degrees um, phase difference so it should be exactly the same so that's that's a problem i've got a um i've got a noise issue going on within the teensy um, that i haven't struck before and uh, more importantly uh, which is you know makes us dead in the water so to speak from a nautical uh, term uh, i can't go any further because it would appear that one of the channels of that audio of that audio shield um, is no longer working which is a bit frustrating, but uh, I'll pick another one of those up uh, the next time over in the States. Um, and that'll give you the opportunity then to work on uh, transferring the old radio down here the, into uh, into that case here. The other thing I wanted to sort of touch on was the, um, the shielding there. So let's turn the volume back up again. At the moment it's now directly through, so I'm not, I'm not going through the Teensy, I'm just going directly through to the audio amplifier. You know, if I must have, if I was sort of remove the the cover, I really, you know, um, unless I'm missing something, I'm just not really hearing any difference at all. Uh, I don't know if there's already enough different. I, I I just don't understand. Well, I don't have enough experience with direct conversion receivers to know what is good and what's not. But uh, I I can't help thinking it's a bit of a waste putting it into this box here when I'm not actually getting any benefit from it. I'd, I'd probably be better moving that to here and getting um, getting it reasonably close to the two SBL ones to minimise so these sorts of wires like this. And would also reduce the length of the I2C uh, communications link between the the TNC and the device itself. Right. Okay. So. Um, what else do I want to cover off on? So we talked about the bandpass filters, the mixers, the Tensi noise. Um, the only other thing too which I've got, if anything, if I just go to put the antenna on to dummy, you might just be able to hear a little rotary encoded noise there. Bit of chuff chuff chuffing. 
Um, I'm not entirely sure where that's coming from. Um, again, if I was to mute the input to the audio amplifier, it's not coming through there, so it's not coming down through the, the VCC line into the uh, into the audio amplifier, so it's not that. Um, I, I do note if you were to move these wires here, which are all carrying audio essentially into the audio amplifier, then you can minimize the issue. It still it doesn't go away, but it's still there. This is probably not a good example, but before um, in another configuration, the closer I got these, the louder it got. Um, I did try uh, actually physically disconnecting the I2C from the Tensi just to uh, to reduce or to eliminate the potential for this these two wires here, the brown and the white wire carrying the I2C to the, SU, uh, the SI5351 has been a little antenna uh, with quite little square waves there carrying that digital data. I thought that might have been acting as a little aerial. Um, I would have to say that's slightly reduced it, but not enough to say, ah, that was it. So uh, it's not that. Um, if I reduce, if I remove all the inputs, if I, in fact, I go back to the uh, the output of the Tensi, we still got a little bit of a little bit of it there. So again, I'm not entirely sure where that's coming from and the best way to uh, address that. Um, that'll have to be something to do once I get the audio board back in uh, and I can have a, uh, a closer look at that. Yes, yeah, so suffice to say all fun and games. Um, in fact, just carrying on from that, that encoder noise, one option may be potentially to run um, different uh, voltage regulators. Like have this, voltage, this is a 5 volt voltage regulator dropping down our 13.8 down to 5 volts and it's providing 5 volts for the SI5351, uh, 5 volts for the Tensi, and this is actually going around the back, that's 13, so it's just the two voltages there. Um, one, one potential option is to have two of these, one dedicated to the SI5351 and one dedicated to the Tensi. Um, that may be something to explore uh, later on. Um, but I'm certainly curious, well, interested to hear from anybody who has had uh, encoder noise issues to see um, how they got around that in the past. Um, the last few radios I have built, which, which there, there has been way, way down a little bit of the noise, but it's absolutely totally swamped uh, as soon as you get any kind of um, atmospheric noise coming through or, or normal RF coming in. It's, um, it's just a non-event. So that'll be something to, uh, well, be interested or curious to hear from, from someone on that one. Okay, well, I'm absolutely uh, starting to ramble now, so I'm going to knock it on the head. Uh, something I didn't mention over here, the input to the, uh, in fact, I will mention it actually. Um, the other thing I did try to do is to minimize um, earth loops. So I'm trying to minimize and apply sort of the, a good shielding for the digital side and the, the analog side. So the inputs to the, well the audio inputs here, the two grey wires going through into the Tensi, um, I have not uh, grounded the shield. So that the shield you can see there is just folded back. Um, so it's only shielded at one end. Um, yeah. While I'm pausing here, uh, initially I was, I was looking at trying to do a star earthing network back to our main distribution board over the back, um, but that becomes difficult because straight away you've got um, from the, the digital side of the house, uh, we've got a shield here. Um, the shield for these two black wires that are carrying the local oscillator through to the uh, two SBL ones is is connected to the shield of the of the case, and then at this end it's the the shield on the actual base itself. Um, that's linked together, um, but yeah, it's it, it's a it's a bit of a black art the whole earthing issue and trying to to minimise earth loops. Um, but I've certainly tried to minimise it from the audio side of the house. Uh, and the only other thing to look out to with this particular um, board on the on the Tensi is uh, it's got a um, a floating ground for the headphone output um, and that shouldn't be connected to the normal uh, normal say I'll call it DC ground or system ground uh, and that's why there's an audio isolation transformer here. Uh, this is just a, a stock standard 600 ohm to 600 ohm 
and it's just uh, the, the headphone jack output is going to the primary and then the secondary uh, is feeding straight through into the audio amplifier uh, and just decided to throw in for good measure just a second um, blocking resistor, uh, say again, blocking capacitor there, a one microfarad blocking capacitor just to make sure that I wasn't um, shorting that virtual ground or that analog ground um, to signal uh, just to minimize any, any current flow there, DC current that is. Uh, right, so I've tried to do that, um, but like I say, it's it's this is a, a warts and all video to, you know, to provide an update and sort of some of the, the trials and tribulations of, of trying to make these things. But at the end of the day, it's all, it's all fun and it's all, well, it gets a bit frustrating at some stage, but uh, it's certainly fun trying to nut out what's going on. But, uh, but the good thing is the, if, we, if we bypass the, um, bypass the Teensy and go directly through to the uh, audio amplifier, it certainly sounds good. It's... Um, it's such a simple circuit there, and as you can see there, there's absolutely no uh, external amplification on the output of those two SBL ones. Um, you'll see a lot of this type of front end, traditionally a uh, some uh, op amps on the output. Um, I was, and I yeah, I guess I potentially still am toying with the idea of um, a low noise op amp. I'd probably just go for the uh, the 5534, which is the same low noise amplifier here in the first input, or the input stage of the audio amplifier um, just to provide a bit of gain. The reason why I didn't do it in this configuration is because the audio shield for the Teensy um, has some really, or well, the audio library more the point, has some really nice features that allow you to uh, drive the, 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 the amplifiers on the, so again, the amplifiers to the, the codec in there and you can actually artificially uh, amplify the signal coming in so um, my, my thinking was, well, why, why have external amplification when I can just use the internal amplification? Um, maybe a good idea, maybe not, but uh, that certainly is initial try. And of course, um, if you're just now bypassing the Tensi and taking the audio from the two SBL ones directly through to the audio amplifier, as we hear in this particular configuration, then uh, we have, you know, it's it's not very loud there because we've got little or no gain. Uh, we've got a little bit of gain coming through from the RF amplifier, so we're that, around that 10 dB. Um, most of it, most of that's been eaten up by the the uh, the filtering, the bandpass filter. Um, and like I say, the only real amplification uh, in the circuit is sitting here, the uh, the audio amplifier, um, and that's certainly not um, set up uh, for for a direct conversion receiver. It's more for a um, for a single sideband where we do have more amplification coming through on the intermediate frequency amplifiers. But uh, but for this kind of testing it's fine because again uh, I would have used and I intend to use when I get back to this uh, the ability to adjust the output um, volume for the um, audio board then to feed in to provide some additional pre-amplification before going into the, the final uh, audio amplifier there. Right, yeah. So, like I say, plan there is to set this aside. Um, I'll order a new board and pick that up next time over in the states, uh, and then get back into this, and then work out um, where that noise is coming from. Um, so, I may have just set that up on on a separate board just by itself. Uh, do some um, some feed through, direct feed through from line in to the output, um, and, and see what's going on before. Uh, marrying it back up with the rest of the receiver. Okay, like I say, I, uh, I've rambled on long enough, so I'll say 73s, and uh, I will keep you posted. Cheers all.